was from Magpie 2541, one of our regular viewers. This is my list, my top 10 list of what my favourite moments of TNA in 2011 are. Let's get going. Number 10, Sting being made, the DOA. Uh, I thought this was great, you know, uh, it's a little minor moment, I mean, but I thought this was like the initial idea of putting, no offense, but putting these older wrestlers to the side and focusing in on these young guys, which is a much better idea, uh, I think. And yeah, it was just a good a good way to say, look, uh, we're listening to you fans. It's time time we did this. Okay. Number nine. Number nine. Fortune turning on immortal. Uh, I know this was uh, log uh, logically this made uh, not much sense, but uh, I think it was a better story than what they were initially going to go with and yeah for uh fortune turning on a more great moment number eight uh chris harris returning uh now i doubt this would pro probably be on many people's list because of the way it turned out but i the initial return of chris harris i thought was great he came out he didn't say anything uh and it was just a a good moment there. Number seven. Low key returns. Always been a fan of the and of Triple X, and I thought, well, okay, they've already got Daniels back, uh, maybe, and they. I initially thought that Low Key was going to get the contract, not Austin Aries. I thought, hey, uh, that was a good idea. It would have been a good idea. And, yeah, so. Uh, but, yeah, I, I just liked seeing Low Key again after the situation that happened with w, him in WWE. And All right. Number six. <laughs> Number six, Chris Daniels returns. Now, this was great. I just, uh, I, um, I actually had the pleasure of actually meeting Chris Daniels at an event he did, did out here in Australia when he, him and AJ just tore the house down. Uh, I mean, the, the arena wasn't entirely full, but man, they just... They just really turned it on, and uh, yeah, I've been a Daniels fan ever since. Um, also, yeah, this was great. I mean, he just comes out to kind of take the place of AJ while AJ was off or whatever. 
Number five. We are now halfway through the list. Uh, yeah, Gail Kim returning. I should have made this a list of returns, shouldn't I? Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, Gail Kim coming back. That was just great. I'm, I like Gail Kim. I don't know why. I have no idea why WWE didn't use this woman as that like their top woman. I mean, she's sexy, uh, and she can work in the ring. Uh, I mean, initially that's all they want. Uh, I thought that would be all they wanted. I mean, for however many years it was, I think it's four years or whatever, she just sat there doing nothing. Uh, I mean, killing time until she could, could come back. I mean, at the time, though, when she left, I thought, okay, well, she's done pretty much all she can do. Uh, I mean, she, I think she done everything except win the knockouts tag titles. All right. All right. Um, Number four. Uh, this only happened recently. <laughs> the the Jarrett's getting fired. Uh, the way this all came about. I mean, I haven't seen the whole thing. I just saw it on the internet, and I just laughed. I mean, Sting's there, and he's like, "Oh, but you said this, and you said this." <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, but yeah, great moment, and they, they're getting fired, oh, I know it's work, I mean, come on, but that was just great. Number three. Uh, lethal lockdown. Uh, I've had some disagreements with some friends online about this, uh, they didn't think Dockdown was a great pay-per-view. I don't think it was. I think like, I think there was some moments in there that were really uh, stunk it up. Uh, especially during, uh, there was this few moments during the um, Pope match, uh, uh, taking on, uh, where they constantly just went out, kept going out to the back of the crowd, and you, you couldn't see anything. I mean, it was just really weird. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Lethal Lockdown match really saved. It was like. Pfft. Oh, great! Yeah, just tore the house down. Uh, and AJ coming back—that was great. I mean, even like, but the Ric Flair stuff kind of helped down. But yeah, anyway. Number two. Destination X. Uh, I know what people are thinking. This, this isn't at the top of the list. I mean, come on. That was a great pay per view. <laughs> yes, it was, and I, I would definitely say this was um, out of all the pay per views. I think all, all the ones I've seen, anyway, this was pay per view of the year, hands down. <laughs> uh, everything that the fans would want: the return of the six sided ring, the focus on the X division, Brian Kendrick finally winning the X division title. Like e even the mo, uh, like. There was this great moment backstage where Eric Young needed a tag team partner to take on Jen Mee in Jen Mee's last match. Why they were fighting, uh, I can understand, but at the same time, I don't understand. Um, yeah, they... Uh, and he comes out and he get, uh, And there's Daniels in his curry man outfit saying, Oh, I can't the wrestle, I haven't got the visa. And uh, neither does uh, Centurion or whatever... It, Matt Red was, but Shark Boy ends up being his tag top partner, and I I like Shark Boy, uh, and that was just great. Uh, anyway, number one, Bobby Roode finally, finally winning the uh, the world title. After this, this is when I knew. Okay, bam, we're right on track. Uh, I still actually have not seen the match where he won the title. <laughs> I've got it over here, I think. Uh, I just have pulled pull it up to it. But after I knew that Bobby Roode won the world title, I was like, yes! Finally! Uh, why he couldn't do it at Battle for Glory, I have no idea. But um, 
The direction I think they're heading in is that uh, James Storm gets his rematch, uh, probably at lockdown or something, and yeah, that's at least what I think they're heading towards. Or, uh, yeah, but yeah. Anyway, that's it. My top ten list, my first one ever. I uh, hope you guys liked it. Uh, I'm gonna go in and edit and make this look a lot flashier.